Uh, thank you, everyone. So um, I'm John Resig. I'm an independent researcher. Um, and I wanted to kind of talk through a number of different projects that I've been working on, all relating to art history and computer vision. Um, and a lot of it tied to the, the Frick here and my, my work with them. Um, and I just wanted to step back and talk a little bit to how I came to this area. Uh, my, my day job is very different. I'm a computer programmer. Uh, I work at Khan Academy, but there, but I, I'm not doing any computer vision stuff or any art history stuff. This is all my kind of side passion hobby. But it all kind of came through uh, my love of Japanese prints. Uh, this is an art form that I've loved for years. And uh, there was one thing I struggled with, which is that uh, identifying the prints and understanding them is actually really challenging. Uh, you have to know Japanese, you have to know uh, uh, classical Japanese, you have to know all these sort of things. Um, and one thing I just wanted more than anything else was to be able to take a picture of a print and be able to find other copies of that print in institutions around the world. Because there are prints, there are multiples of them, they exist somewhere. Uh, so uh, this is what I kind of set out to build. And I did this back in like 2011 and 12. I'm gonna skip back this real quick. Sorry, the, uh, I built this database called uqa.org. Um, and it's a database of currently about uh, 220,000 Japanese prints from about 20 some odd institutions around the world. Uh, this both including uh, public, you know, universities, museums and such and private uh, uh, dealers and auction houses. Um, so when I was building this, uh, I guess one of the things I should state as well is that I'm not really doing any original research. I, I like these the very awesome people from universities who are doing incredible new research. I don't have time for that. Uh, so I'm just taking things off the shelf and like, can I make this work? And uh, so I think with that caveat in here, so there are a couple of reasons. Uh, uh, what I'm going to talk about today are different technologies that I tried to use for my various projects and whether or not they succeeded. Um, so one of the, the, the technologies that I needed to end up using for this particular goal was doing essentially image similarity analysis. And you know, a couple of speakers have already talked about this, but this works really well for flat images uh, that are you know, somewhere within another image. And uh, at, at the time, again, this is like 2011, 2012, uh, I, the only open source thing that existed was this thing called ImageSeq, where you could, you could find things that looked similar. Uh, in practice, however, I found it that it just did not work very well at all, and that it, it, it was never able to find things within another image. It, it, had to be, you're, it was looking at the complete image to the complete image and trying to find that similarity. So like this lit case looks pretty great. It's like all finding buses, but if that bus was a tiny part of another image, it would never find it. Um, so I had to kind of discard that immediately. And at the, uh, it was around this time that I reached out to uh, Tenai and, and they have a, a commercial service called Match Engine. And I told them about the project I wanted to do and they let me use their service. So this is a commercial service, but it's really, really good in that it was able to find image fragments and things like that. So this is what I ended up using for the site. And just kind of show some of the examples here is that, you have, for example, this is a print by uh, Hokusai or Waterfall. And you have many different copies from different institutions, but you can tell that the, you know, the quality of the image is different. Some are in black and white, some are you know, surrounded by color bars and all sorts of stuff, but it's still able to find the matches. And I guess one thing that I'm emphasizing through this is that it's not using any metadata whatsoever. Some of these institutions are Japanese, some are Europe, European and use you know, different languages, and, but it, all it cares about is the images and grouping them together. Uh, and then it's also, this is an example here, this is a case where an institution actually put the images of this diptych uh, backwards, and there it is correctly down below. Um, and this is other, uh, just to kind of show where uh, Match Engine didn't quite work as I expected it would, where it's actually, in this case, matching the color bars uh, rather than the image itself. And this, that's because probably the image is relatively delicate. There isn't as much detail in it, whereas the color bars have a lot of detail and a lot of color. Um, so it was around this time that, my, uh, that uh, 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 the Frick Art Reference Library reached out to me and they were interested in doing some uh, uh, you know, computer vision analysis in their collection. They had seen my website. And you know, as, as was described earlier, that the, you know, in an art historical archive, uh, you end up with these photographs of art. And you know, you know, the Frick has you know, over a million of them. Um, and these are all, you know, have all these descriptions and things. So this seemed like an opportunity to, to expand what I was doing. So uh, I started to do this, this similar sort of analysis, and in this case, uh, also using Match Engine. 
Um, but I guess one thing before going into it was we weren't sure is that I'd only been analyzing Japanese prints, which are graphic and very hard lines and all that sort of stuff. Would this work for photographs of art where it's all fuzzy? And it's, it's actually seemed to work pretty well. So we, we, we started about analyzing the collection of anonymous Italian art. So these are all, uh, uh, you know, photographs of paintings and frescoes and things like that, but they don't have really any good metadata because the, uh, the artist isn't known, nor is the title known. And so it's all just kind of like anonymous artist, 14th century, anonymous artist, 15th century. And then you're just like, and so like there's really no way to match them together using metadata. So this is where, uh, you know, I started to do this analysis and, you know, you're able to start to cluster things together and you see that, yes, in fact, there are multiple photos of the same artwork and sometimes able to, you know, fill in, you know, missing gaps. I just want to show a few of these examples. You're also able to find fragments. So like, you know, taking a, a photograph of like a, a larger fresco or something like that. And then in, in handling cases where black and white versus color, uh, before and after conservation. Um, yeah. So then, and then eventually you start getting into you know copies. So so cases where where this you have the same work, but obviously it's changed. You know, there's a, a different version of a, a later version. Uh, and then you get into many you know many different copies. Again, the, the, these are all obviously influenced by the same work here, but they're they're different, all different unique works. So it's kind of stemming from that work, um, uh, we started to look at. Uh, what happens, so this is you know, one archive, and actually one, one part of an archive, what happens if we look at many art history photo archives? And so this is where the uh, Pharaohs Project came from, was a consortium of all these different uh, art history photo archives that are all around the world, and their goal was to combine their resources, all their images, into a single place, uh, so that way you can start to find these new connections. Um, so I, I started to work with, uh, with them on this project, and I built this database called the uh, uh, the Pharos Images Project. And this is a database of currently a, a, about 97,000 images representing about 60,000 artworks, and uh, from a number of the different institutions, about, about I think about six institutions right now. What we start, decided to do is at the the start is just to like focus on Italian art images, just to have some common basis that we can we can we can work with. And but this works very similarly to my uh, Japanese print site, in, in that you're 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 able to browse through the images and search for them and, and things like that. But the one, one major distinction here is that when I built this, I used an open source uh, image analysis solution, one called, uh, I think it's pronounced, I think I'm calling it Pace C. I don't know what other people call it, but that's what I call it. And uh, so this is, this is open source. And I, I built this much later, uh, released this in uh, 2016. And by that point, open source solutions have started to kind of catch up with commercial ones. So this is one that I've been using. I've also contributed to a little bit, fixing some, some bugs and adding some features. Uh, but this one is actually pretty good. It actually holds up pretty well to match engine. And so you're able, to, and this is to show the, the database, you're able to browse through all the different artworks. Um, and you know, it's searched by you know, the, the name of a particular artist. Uh, but then you can get the, into the image analysis, starting to group these different records together into a single source. Uh, so you can, you know, you can start to see that you know, this is the, the same painting by the same artist, but these are two different records of two different institutions you know, brought, brought together. Uh, but then you got to start to get into some different ones here. Again, like this is you know, probably copies of, of an original, but you have some anonymous copies at, at diff that have been cataloged at different institutions, again, combined together. And you, you end up with a, with a whole bunch of these. Uh, uh, and it, it, the, the, what was discussed earlier of, of, about like um, finding surprising cases of metadata not matching, this comes up a lot. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and, and again, like it's no fault of the institutions who are doing the cataloging because it's, it's a needle in a haystack problem. You can't possibly know what some researchers stuck in a random drawer 40 years ago. Like, yeah, you, yeah, it's the sort of thing that computers are uniquely designed to help with. And I think that's, this is one of the things that I've been trying to do a lot of, is I don't want to replace researchers, I want to give them tools to help them. And so just to kind of, and I think this is one, I just want to show a case of a, a, an example where PACE doesn't really work quite as well as, we, uh, as I'd hope, and that it's starting to pull in other things that it's obviously not the same painting anymore, but, but um, you might argue it's stylistically similar, but 
yeah, I don't know. Um, so I've started to experiment with a couple other technologies, um, and I just kind of wanted to show my initial results with them. So I've started to use the commercial API, uh, Clarify, and I've I've been struggling to use it, to find that uh, to see that it works well. Just to show an example, this is with some uh, uh, American art uh, paintings uh, uh, that were cataloged here in the Frick, and so this is a case where you know th there was the same exact piece, uh, two different photographs. Uh, it was able to kind of find that they were similar, but the thing is like it's mixed in with a whole bunch of other stuff. You know, so it is finding like the details is like, oh, these are all trees and there's water and stuff like that. Uh, but then here's another case where, you know, there's some buffalo and it, it's not finding the connection. It's, it's starting to group it again with other water and trees and stuff. So it's not, I don't feel like it's quite there yet or, or maybe I need to configure it differently. Uh, and I, I just wanted to give an example of tagging. I know there's some discussion on tagging later on, but like sometimes the tagging's straight on. It's like, oh yeah, trees, landscape, fog, nature. Yeah, this is like pretty much this painting. But then you end up with like retro, vintage, antique, painting, picture frame. And it's like, that doesn't help me at all. Yeah, there's, none of that is like really describing what is the contents of that. Um, and then I, I've also been experimenting with writing my own image similarity analysis uh, using TensorFlow. And just, I, I still very early on, just, I just wanted to kind of show some of the clusters that have been generated so far. Again, these are for uh, Japanese prints, but you, uh, these are all like very similar, you know, Udagawa school, like 1850s or so, uh, clustered together. And this is, uh, you know, like all like, you know, beautiful women, probably like 1840s. Um, and then you have like, you know, no actors, and this is like 1890s, uh, 1900s. Um, and then finally, like much more graphic. So it it's definitely seems to be uh, uh, promising. So this is still, still something that I that I'm exploring. Uh, so I just wanted to ramp up there and just provide links to the ukiyo.org database, the the Pharos Images database. But I think one of the things that's important is, is that everything that I talked about today is open source. I've written all of it. It's freely available. You can use it for your things. Uh, a lot of a lot of my work, uh, especially with the Frick and with Pharos, was funded by the Crest Foundation. So I'm very happy to give this back to the community at, at large. So you can find it up on my GitHub as well. And I provide some research that I've written up on my website. So please use it for for your things. And I guess let me know if you have any questions. But yeah, thank you. Thank you.